And I think lots of businesses will be like that because we've had to adapt, we've had to keep moving forward and we can't continue to just keep shutting our doors every time the government try and, and say we need to go back into another lockdown. So I think we'll be much better prepared. I think we'll be ready for it. And I think the world in general will continue to keep moving forward. Hi guys, it's R. Shalahi. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the property market, what's happened over the last 24 months. More importantly, give some predictions as to what's going to happen over the next 12 months and what 2022 looks like for you. Now, before we do that, I need a small favour from you. If you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell, every time I release a video, you get to get notified of it. Now, let's get looking into this. What's happened over the last 24 months? We've been talking about COVID a lot. You know, I put quite a lot of the claims out there at the start of COVID and I don't mind putting my hand up and say you know what I got some of them wrong. I was expecting the property market to crash. I was expecting massive discounts on property and some of the things that I did say have actually happened and are correct. We've seen some phenomenal deals in the commercial market. We've seen lots of companies continue to keep their staff at home and that includes me. I've kept a lot of my staff working from home which means that it's allowed me to release some of the office space which means that it's actually allowed me to save money and overheads and I know that lots of businesses have done this too. Now the one thing that I did get wrong is that I was actually expecting the property market to crash. I don't mind saying that. So did so many other people. If you read all the reports and all the expectations everyone was expecting the property market to take a massive dive. They were talking about 20% discount, 30% discount and you know price reductions of up to 20 to 30% and it didn't happen. In actual fact it took the opposite view. It actually started going up up. And now we've seen prices go back to pre-2007, 2008, and even higher in some locations. The one thing that we did see is that we saw London kind of level out and actually brought us back on a level playing field in comparison to other parts of the country before London used to be in its own bubble. And it actually, it was a good thing to see because previously all we saw was London increasing, increasing and increasing, and it kind of left the rest of the country out on a whim. Now, what do we expect for 2020? 22. Now, I'm going to be looking at this as a property investor, first and foremost. Now, I can see that we're going to perhaps get more legislation. And the reason why I say we're going to get more legislation is because as a result of everything that's happened over the last 24 months, as well as the purchase of the properties and the prices increasing, so have the rentals. And naturally, there's going to be a point where the government has said, you know what, guys, enough is enough. You can't keep increasing the rent to the levels that we have been. And, you know, to be fair, I'll talk about myself. Wolverhampton, we've hit some unprecedented levels of renting, something that I've not seen in my lifetime so far, nor have people previously seen the levels as to what we're renting at. I'm giving you an example, one bedroom flat in outer skirts of Wolverhampton, not even near the city, fetching within the region of five, six, seven hundred pounds, city centre apartments, hitting quite large figures. Again, this is all comparison to the local market. Market. Now, moving on, we're going to see lots of changes as well. So I'm a little bit worried about the abolishment of Section 21 because that gives a lot more power to the tenant and it puts the landlord at a very risky position so that if a tenant moves in, we can't physically put Section 21 in place, which means that bringing a tenancy to a close could be quite difficult. We've also got external further pressures being put on property investors in general. And when I say that is that the EPC rating, there's a guy for the government to try and bring properties to EPC level C and above. Previously, it was F and above. Now they're raising it and they want to try and get to 2025, which we may think is quite far away, but the reality is it's actually only now three years away. And within that three year period, lots of landlords are now going to have to start to reinvest back into their properties to try and achieve a level, an EPC level of C and above. Now that's going to be quite tough. Now, there's going to be lots of landlords that exit the market. And now may be the perfect time for you to exit. You know, if the prices are high, you never sell when it's low. So if prices are high, 
now may be the perfect time. If you really think that to get that property up to a level C and above, it's going to cost X amount, and you're thinking, well, in actual fact, I've hardly got any equity in it, plus I'm adding this into it, it's going to actually push me into negative equity. And there'll be lots of landlords out there like that. I saw in 2021 lots of, let me call them older landlords, or lots of the elder generation of landlords selling their portfolios. And, you know, as the owner of the Property Investor app, I saw lots of deals that come through. And when we start to understand the reason why they're being sold, a large majority of them were tired landlords, landlords that wanting to retire, landlords that wanting to get out of the market with all the additional legislation coming through, like I've already talked about the abolishment of Section 21. We're going to see the increase in standards, so they want to get to level C+. Plus. You know, not to take into consideration, there's some positive points that, you know, rental prices at an all-time high, and I think that they will continue to rise. From a consumer's point of view, that's obviously a bad thing. Obviously, the more money they're spending on renting, the less of a chance they have to actually save and then get them onto the property ladder, which ultimately is a large goal of the government. So, you know, in that respect, it's going to be a massive change. From property prices point of view, I've already said that I think they're going to increase at some point. And I'm not predicting that it's going to be in 2022, but definitely within the next 24 months, we have to see a level of correction. And when we talk about correction, we're not talking about all the things that was going to happen over the last 24 months, where we're talking about a 20 or 30% correction. But I think things will start to simmer out and things will actually start to level out and get to levels where I'd say that they're a little bit more comfortable. And more importantly, I'd like to think that the competition starts to slow down a bit. You know, the reason why prices are increasing and, you know, if we go back to simple economics of supply and demand, we're not obviously building as many properties as we need. So therefore, and we are living on an island. So therefore, we're limited to the amount that we can build. And people, you know, you and I as property investors, we're probably looking at the same style of stock and we're competing against each other. You're offering 100,000, I'm offering 110. I've just outbid you, you then go and above. And as a result of that, they can, you know, the market prices the product according to the level of demand. So if, you know, in reality, if we wanted to simmer the market down, us as property investors have a lot of power by simply not trying to compete with each other, but that will never happen. Now, I'm just gonna quickly refer back to some of my notes. So we've talked about title property checks. We've talked about the EPC rating. We've talked about prices. Now, there's so many things that we all predicted. And like I said, some of them have happened. Some of them have not. And the one thing that I will say in business in general is that if we are to continue to, let's say, further explore other variants that come in and out. So for argument's sake, when we started, it was COVID-19. And then as a result of that, we've had an Indian variant. Now we've got a new variant. I'm struggling to keep up with all the variants. I don't mind saying that. However, I think working from home and working remotely will become part of the norm. There's already talks and as recording in December 21, that there's going to be further working from home measures put in place. I know that the government are looking at what may happen in January 2022. And as a result, there may be further minor lockdowns, nothing to what we experienced in 2020 and 2021. But I think we will get further lockdowns. And unfortunately, I hate saying that because it kind of puts a pressure on a lot of people. But ultimately, I think what will happen is that we may go in and out, but for shorter periods. Now, as a business, we are a little more prepared for this. We've seen the tough times over the last 24 months. Now, as a result, it's up to us as to what we now do to survive. We know what had happened. We had put systems and procedures in place to make sure that should anything like this happen again, that we can still continue to trade, we can still continue to operate. And I, for one, like think that I'm in a much better position today should the government decide that we all have to work from home and we go back into a mini lockdown, that I'll be able to do this and still be able to operate and trade and not be as worried as I was in 2020. And I think lots of businesses will be like that because we've had to adapt, we've had to keep moving forward and we can't continue to just keep shutting our doors every time the government try and, and say we need to go back into another lockdown. So I think we'll be much better prepared. I think we'll be ready for it. And I think the world in general will continue to keep moving forward. So that's kind of my predictions for 2022. I appreciate they're quite broad, but the honest answer is, is that I want to be as optimistic as possible. When I say that, I think there's going to be lots of 
good things that come out of 2022. There's still going to be lots of deals out there. There's still going to be lots of opportunities for people out there, but they will only be as good as you make them. And I'm a big believer that, you know, what you find and how you deal with it is the way that, you know, you create your own luck in essence. So in that respect, if you've got any opportunities and you want to share them with me, you want me to look over them, here's a little gift from me to you to welcome you into the new year. Feel free to email them over. Let me have a look at them. So email it to admin at rshilahi.com. Let me have a look at the opportunity. If there's something that we can work together, I'm opening the doors to almost like JV partnerships. So whereas I bring some skill and if you think that you've got something and you think that it's definitely worth exploring, let's have a look at it. So there we have it, guys. Just a short video, just to welcome you into the new year. Hopefully, let's go into this with eyes wide open. Let's look out for each other. Let's support each other. But more importantly, let's continue to make this a great year. We've had two years where we weren't sure what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. Let's put all that behind us. Let's make 2022 year a great year. So guys, as always, if you want more free content like this, feel free to go and check out my podcast. It's called The Property Rebel. You can find it on Stitcher, you can find it on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, just to name a few. As well as that, you can find me on all social media channels. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and Clubhouse, all under the handles of Al Shilahi. And finally, if you haven't already done so, why don't you give me a mini New Year present? Why don't you go and check out the Property Investor app? It's the UK's first property investment platform, which showcases all kinds of deals all over the UK. Whether you're looking for BMV deals, whether you're looking for rent to rent, lease options, service accommodation deals, we've got them all on there. Now, to get involved, there's two ways. You can either go to our website, which is propertyinvestorapp.co.uk, or you can go to the App Store if you have a smartphone and type in Property Investor. It takes two minutes to download and register, and you'll see all the opportunities right in the palm of your hand. So there we have it, gents, ladies and gents, should I say. I really wish you the best for the forthcoming year. I really hope that you hit all your goals and you achieve all that you want to achieve. And I look forward to working with you. Take care and thank you and bye-bye.